Welcome everyone to Pivotal Stats, where we talk about data analysis techniques, business intelligence platforms, and much, much more. So let's go. Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting video on Python for data analysis. Up until now, we have covered the basics of Python in an easy to understand series of six videos. If you're a beginner, then I would highly recommend to watch those videos first and then come back to this video again. Now, since that's out of the way, Let's dive into today's topic, which is libraries in Python. Now, what are libraries? In Python, library, also known as modules or packages, are a collection of pre-written code that provides a set of functionalities and tools to perform specific tasks. They're designed to be reused and can save a lot of time for the developers by providing ready-made solutions for common programming tasks. Python libraries offer various capabilities such as data manipulation, scientific computing, web development, machine learning, and much more. They consist of functions, classes, and variables that can be imported into your Python program to extend their capabilities. However, as of now, we'll be focusing on two main libraries which are mainly used for data analysis purposes. The first one is NumPy, and this is a library for numerical computing with support for large and multidimensional arrays and mathematical functions. The second one is Pandas. Now Pandas is a library for data manipulation and analysis, providing data structures like data frames for handling structured data. Apart from these, there are other libraries which are used for data visualization, which we will look into a later stage as and when required. Now if you're using Google Colab like I am right now, most of the common or popular libraries will already be installed into the cloud environment. However, just in case your preferred library is not already installed on the environment, you can use this code to install any package. Okay. Now, since I am on Google Colab, I need to write it like this, percentage sign, pip, everything in small letters, install, and let's say numpy. Okay, this statement will install the library onto my environment. If I execute this code, this will say that requirement already satisfied because the latest version of NumPy has already been installed in the Google Colab environment. Now, just in case you're not using Google Colab and are working with any software which is locally installed like Jupyter Notebook, then you would have to open up the terminal window or command prompt like this and write pip install numpy. Now observe, I have not used a percentage sign here because I'm directly writing this into the terminal window. Now it says the requirement already satisfied because I do have the local version of the software on my system and I have also installed the latest version of numpy on my system. So that's why it says requirement already satisfied. Obviously, this is assuming that pip is already installed in your system. Now, pip is a package manager for Python. If you have installed Anaconda software package, then this is automatically installed. I would not be getting too much in the detail about installing Python since there are so many videos already available on YouTube, which shows you exactly how to do that in detail. So feel free to check those out in case required. Now, coming back to our topic, once the library is installed, then it is ready to be imported into the environment. And there are three main ways to do that. First one is that you write import and you write numpy and you write, you give it an alias np. Now np is just an alias that we used. So you can use any name, but since this is the standard, uh, it would be advisable to stick to it. And once you do that, the numpy library will be imported. Now the second method is, just in case you do not want the entire numpy library to be imported and only a couple of functions to be imported into it, then you can use this from numpy import sqrt, which stands for square root. Okay. And then this will only import the square root function from numpy. And the last and the final method is from numpy import star. Now this will import everything which is there in NumPy library uh, in terms of function or classes into your environment. Now, personally, I prefer the first one, which is import NumPy as NP. And then once the package 
or library is imported, I call whatever function I need from that by just initiating my package name and then adding a dot and then using whatever function I required from that particular function. Now this was just an example for importing NumPy. You can use the same code to import any package or library within Python. Now that you have imported, let's say you just want to check what is the version of NumPy library that is currently installed on the environment. To check the version, all you need to do is type np dot double underscore version then double underscore and execute. This will show you the current version of NumPy which is installed on the environment. And again, if you want to upgrade this version to a newer version, the code for doing that is in case of Google Colab, you write percentage pip install np space dash dash upgrade and then execute. Okay. Now, since uh, the version that I have right now is already upgraded, I would not be running this. But when you're running the same thing on a terminal window, you would have to write pip install numpy dash dash upgrade. This will install the latest version of NumPy onto your system in case you're using a local software like Jupyter Notebook. Finally, in case you want to just see some documentation related to the library which you are importing or using, all you have to do is just write help and then the library name np and run this. And this will show you a detailed documentation of all the classes and all the functions that are currently available in that particular library. So that is it for today. However, stay tuned for upcoming videos where we will be putting all these libraries to use and understand them in detail. If you're enjoying the content that I'm producing, then please consider subscribing to the channel and hit that notification bell icon so that you do not miss any content that I upload. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.